I'm, Br I'm very pleased to welcome Brent Lewis from the Ministry of Transport. And Brent's going to give us an overview of uh, what it's like to join the EV revolution, um, the future of the car, all the available EV options for you. So after Brent's, Brent's presentation, there will be time for Q&A. Um, so yeah, please think of the questions as we go. And um, I ask people, if you're at the back, just to move forward as much as possible to let people, um, latecomers, into the um, uh, seminar area. So over to you, Brent. See if I can make that. Hi everyone, um, thanks very much for coming out on such a rainy day. Um, you've learned one really good lesson already if you've had your uh, eyes peeled as you've been walking across the car park. So, do electric vehicles work in the rain? Seems like they do. So that's, a, that's really good news, isn't it? Great place to start. I'm Brent Lewis from the Ministry of Transport. Ministry of Transport looks over all of the electric vehicles program in New Zealand and basically the government's very keen to see more people buying electric vehicles, the emissions reductions that we get moving from traditional form of power, um, petrol and diesel, moving to electric. Um, electric Electricity is 80% renewably generated in New Zealand, so um, we can really reduce our emissions, so the government's very keen to see that happening. Um, so that's, um, that's why the government's involved in this stuff. So what do we do at the Ministry of Transport? We provided advice to ministers on the May 2016 Electric Vehicles Programme, which has got various different initiatives in it to help people buy electric vehicles. That's an ongoing role. We keep an eye on all of the things that are going on across the sector and try to work out if there's something not quite right or opportunities, places the government could help and give a bit more direction. Um, and there are various government agencies involved uh, in supporting electric vehicles in New Zealand. Um, and we keep an eye across all that stuff. So the title of this presentation today is Future of the Car and Available EV Options. What I'm going to do is talk, give you a pretty general overview of what's going on in a global sense and in an industry sense. Um, the kind of things that we can see, the trends which, we, which we're seeing coming to New Zealand. And then towards the end of this conversation we're going to be quite pointy and we're going to get down to some real detail um, so you can look and see uh, some ideas about how electric vehicles can be a really good option for people in New Zealand. So we expect to see some significant differences in the car going into the future. And there are going to be three significant changes that we will see. So the first one is ownership. Over time we expect fewer and fewer people to own cars and greater use of shared vehicles. So that's it's like, like a, a little, little bit like, like a rental, rental car model, model but, but people, people taking the vehicle on an hour by hour or you know, inside, inside a day, day basis. basis. Um, um, we've, we've already got, got, we've got, got some, some other presenters here today, today and some other people over there. there. Um, some some businesses business called Mevo and another one called Yugo who are already doing car sharing in New Zealand. Zealand. You might have heard some announcements earlier this week about some of that happening in Christchurch. So that individual ownership of cars is going to start to diminish a little bit. The other, the other main, main change, change that we're expecting to see is greater prevalence of autonomous vehicles, or greater prevalence of autonomous features. I was, I was driving, driving my own car, car which, which is, you know, the news is important, particularly in you. And the other day, I decided, decided that somebody was pulling in front of me and banging on the brakes and flashing some stuff on the dash. I thought, oh, that's pretty good. I saw that car coming, but if I didn't, you know, that was just a little bit quicker. So we expect to see more and more of those. More and more, more of those things just happening, or emerging in New Zealand cars, cars. We, will we will start, start to get to a point where cars will become able, able or at least, least some roads to drive themselves. themselves. And the and other trend that we, that we expect to see is a change in the way that we fuel our vehicles. So less so reliance on petrol and diesel, and more reliance on electricity as the main alternative power source, which is a great, great one for New Zealand. So today's conversation is just about a third of those big trends, so about moving to more electricity. So what, so what, what, are, what are we seeing, seeing in the international, international car markets? Market? What's, what's happening, happening, what's what's happening, happening around, around the world? A number, number of countries, countries have been, been quite, quite strong on their views about, about getting, getting rid of petrol, petrol and diesel. diesel. And, and I have, I to, have say, to say these countries, countries are mostly, mostly influenced by air quality issues and less influenced by emissions. So these are typically countries where you've got 
very, 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 very high, high densities of urban, urban population. population. Sometimes, Sometimes where there's been significant uptake of diesel vehicles, 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 and they're and saying, they're saying look, look, our air is getting, getting, our our air is getting to be quite polluted. And these and are some of the, the, these are some of the countries, countries where people have said, said or where governments have said, look, look we're actually we're going, going to need to be quite, quite, um, otherwise, quite be quite strong, strong, um, about, about our, 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 our moves towards to electric vehicles. vehicles. One, of the, one really of the really interesting things, things is the one in the middle, middle, middle um, China, and um, they said they're going to have electric vehicles, or what they call ultra low emission vehicles, to be 12% of sales in 2020. Four million isn't the total vehicle market. 4 million, Four million is the 12%, 12 um, just, um, to just to give you an, give idea, an idea of the scale of things. Of things. Um, um, in New Zealand, New Zealand we have, we have a, a, in round numbers, about 300,000 vehicles into the fleet, fleet about, about 150,000 per year, year, about 150,000 and 150,000 used in ports. So car, so car manufacturers have responded respond to, this, to this as they as need they to do. So there's just a quick, quick list of some of the highlights there. Mercedes Benz, 10 new EVs by 2022. Volvo, Volvo moving, moving towards, towards having electrification, electrification in all of their, all of their car trains. trains. Volkswagen, we had a pretty unpleasant time, time with diesel with recently. recently. Um, um, plans to be a world leader in EVs. Um, um, BMW, uh, more, more electrically plug-in plug -in hybrids. hybrids. Um, um, good number good of these manufacturers, manufacturers are just through the other side there. Maserati, you know, that really, really core of the Italian, the thoroughbreds, the visceral cars, all the sound and the fury, all that kind of stuff. They're going to go as well. And Honda, who previously been focused on hybrid vehicles, expect to have two thirds of their global sales of electric vehicles by 2030. So, I hope you're seeing from the slides so far, you know, this isn't a theory thing, the vehicles all around you, really. This isn't a theoretical or imaginary thing. What we're seeing now, you know, outside outside this room, is the tip of the iceberg, and there's a lot more to come. And this is and really this is the story really of what we're seeing so seeing far so in New Zealand. New Zealand. Um, um, this line this came from my boss, my boss um, um, Minister of Minister Transport. Of Transport. I, I don't know it's quite a good one. He says electric cars, cars are the future, the future but they're here, they're here now. now. And you can tell they're here now. Major manufacturers have been producing EVs since 2010. Not all of them, not across all the model range. We've got plenty of mainstream vehicles out there. Many of those EVs are available in New Zealand. Um, um, for the new for vehicles, the new vehicles uh, uh, factory, factory warranties, warranties. Typically, typically much longer, longer warranties, warranties that have been offered on petrol and diesel vehicles, diesel vehicles. Factory, factory warranties, warranties are extended batteries, batteries. batteries. Um, and again, um, and again you'll find people across the other side of the world who will talk more about that. that. Almost all of those electric vehicles are also available to use imports. Um, um, they're coming they're in from Japan, Japan or the UK. Or the UK. And and I did these, I did slides, these slides a few weeks ago, weeks ago and I wrote 4,400 4, EVs, EVs in our roads. Our roads. Um, the latest um, the number I got at the beginning of this week was 4,551. 4, um, we're, um, seeing, we're seeing in August, in August we had, we had 330 EVs in the fleet. fleet. So, so lots and lots and lots of vehicles hitting the road. And it means we've got that. See if this works. There we go. We've got that We've fantastic, got that fantastic rate, of rate of growth there. So you can see, you can see you know, not you that long ago, so let's just go back to, back to a year, a year or, so, or so roughly, which, roughly is about which is about there. Okay, so that's okay, 1700, 800, 800, 800, 800, something like that. And now and we're, now we're 4, 4, 4, 4, 000, 4, 000. 4, 000. So we're seeing really, so really, really, really strong growth in New Zealand. What proportion is that of our total fleet? It's still quite small. Um, um, total, total light vehicle light fleet in New Zealand is about, is about 3 million. We've got about so we've got 3 million cars used uh, uh, on our roads. On our roads. Um, um, we've got very we've got high, very high level, level, level of car ownership. So just some so examples, just some and examples, again, people, and again, people out there can, there can tell you more about these. About um, these. Um, these are the kinds these of EVs, EVs you can buy in New, New Zealand. Um, 60,000 um, 60, is, is the starting price for a Hyundai Ioniq. Um, um, you know, five you know, door family-sized family family size hatchback. hatchback. Mitsubishi out and PHEVs. So, you know, falls into that very popular SUV class in New Zealand. About 60,000 is the starting price for them. A few other options too, with Audi, Audi, BMW, 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 um, Tesla, um, uh, Mercedes-Benz. Um, Mercedes um, good number um, of good manufacturers, number of manufacturers in starting to offer EVs. So these are, so these are available, available, available right now, now right now from from from, from, from dealers from in New Zealand. Dealers in New Zealand uh, with factory um, warranty. Factory warranty. <laughs>
a lot of the growth, of the growth in, in um, um, EV sales EV has come from the used import vehicles. 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 So, so this is an example, is an example of just the sort of range of different things and range of different prices. prices. Um, um, so cheapest so thing you can buy in New Zealand now is around about $12,000 for this handling. Um, again, um, some again, of these next door and people can talk to you more about that. Ranging up, ranging up, going up even further. Tesla vehicles are now available. Used in New Zealand as well. Um, so, you know, so, starting you know, from 12 and going to the other side of 100,000. And there's all sorts, um, there's of, all things sorts of things that you can buy here. And, here, and we're seeing really we're strong, seeing growth, really strong sales growth in sales coming out of those vehicles. So, so against, against all, all that, that, let's just, just take a look and see, okay, okay so if, if, if you were a sort of ordinary orphan family, what might this look like to you? So, let's look at Andrew and Lisa. They're married, they've got two kids, seven and five. They live in a suburban house somewhere around about Auckland. Um, Andrew works full time in the city. Lisa's, you know, getting herself back into the workforce um, after having the kids. She works part time, um, a bit more locally. So, you know, pretty ordinary New Zealand family. So, what do they do in terms of their cars? Because that's the kind of thing that I'm interested in. I'm the, you know, the car kind of guy. So, what does Andrew do? got a late model New Zealand new SUV, he drives into the city every day, pays for parking, struggling with congestion. They use that SUV to do some family trips around Auckland in the weekend, um, and they do long weekend trips to Taupo to see their family. So Lisa's parents live in Taupo, so they've got you know, regular trips down there to do you know, grandparent, grandkid kind of stuff. And they spend their Christmas holidays, you know, they rent batches here and there around the place, so they do a bit more driving around those, those kinds of times as well, and they're using, that, um, they're using that big SUV for that. Pretty normal stuff, right? What about Lisa? Lisa's got a smaller car that they've been using just around town, so she uses it to get to her job and back, you know, the supermarket shopping, kids at school, you know, kids after school sport, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, again, pretty typical of the sort of thing that we see um, that we see happening in a New Zealand family. Now, what ha what's happened next, right? Lisa's car's starting to get a bit past it, hasn't got really good safety features, starting to look a bit shabby. Now that she started working, mortgage is a bit under control. You know, they've got a bit more money around. They're thinking, well, you know, time to get time to get rid of that old car. Time to make a good sense of life, right? This is the question that they need to ask, and this is the, this is the starting point if you're going down the EV journey. How far do you drive every day in that car? Right. That's the key. That's the key question. Now it turns out that at least it drives about 30, on average about 30 kilometres every day. They don't use the small car for long distances. They always use the bigger one. It's got more space. It's got better safety features. It's got better performance. So this car is just doing around town stuff. Doesn't go much more than 30 kilometres a day. So, so what's the default, default petrol option? option? It's, it's going to be something, something like this, right? 2011, the new tax, got about 75,000 kilometres, cost about $13,000. That's going to be doing about seven and a half, seven to eight, somewhere around there, around the length of 100 kilometres. And your fuel cost, because I kept the numbers really simple, because I know some guy, she drives 10,000 kilometres. So she's going to be buying 770 litres of fuel a year. And at a price, price of around about two dollars, um, you're a bit cheaper than that at all at the moment. We're a bit more expensive than that at all than that in Wellington. Um, um, that's that's going to cost about one and a half thousand dollars, right? right? That's two fuel costs a year. Are they Are thinking, thinking about, about that? No, no because, because they, they use that and they just do it all the time. But actually, it's one and a half thousand dollars a year. What else could they do? You could look at the EV alternative, right? 2012 Sandy, about, about, about the same year, about the same money, about, about half a mile. mile. That's, that's, that's nice. nice. It's, it's a fully electric, electric car, car, right? 100 cent battery, battery car. car. That, that car will run, run maybe about, about 100 kilometres on a charge. charge. <laughs> What's it going to cost to run that car? So the calculation that we've run says that fuel is going to cost you, well, fuel in the car is about the same as buying a fuji cent per litre. Right? right, not, not a dollar not two dollars, thirty cents per litre. So that so the annual, annual fuel cost, cost is going to go, go from the fifteen hundred dollar amount that we saw before to two hundred dollars. Right, right. So it's so one thousand three hundred dollars a year in petrol. They're, they're not, not going, going to be buying, buying and, and they get a car with the same name and the same mileage. So, so 
That's a pretty pretty tempting option, option for them, right? That's, that's looking pretty, pretty good. good. So, so let's assume that they do that. that. Let's, let's leave, leave them there. there. Let's, let's wind the clock for you. Here. Let's, let's see what they're thinking about later. So they bought that car, they're feeling good about it. They're feeling pretty happy about it, actually. It's worked quite well for them. The car's about the same size as what they had before. It's about the same as what they would have otherwise bought in petrol. It's about the same money we look at that. They're really, they're really pleased, pleased with how, how quiet, quiet it is, is and how, how smooth, smooth it is. is. And they just, and they just really, really like how fluffy it is to drive around, around town. town. I, do I do hope that if you haven't had a chance, chance to drive around, you'll be able to take the chance to do that today. today. Um, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much guaranteeing you you'll come back with these same ideas. What about charging? How did they get on with that? Right. So they need to not go to a petrol station anymore. They've got to get electricity. How does that work? Well, well, if you remember, the lease is doing about 30 kilometres a day, 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 and the cars, the cars are going to range at about 100 kilometres. So they so have they the ability to charge the car, car at home, home in, their in their garage every night. night. So, they, so they, there, are, there, are, there people are people at the show, at the show who give you some great, great ideas, ideas about, about charging around, around the country, the country which, which is fantastic for long trips. trips. This car's not doing that. This car is doing 30, 40, 20 kilometres around town. So what they do is they bring it home, they bring it home, pipes in the garage, just like the old car always did, and they plug it into the wall side of home. So the car dealer supplied by the car, a safety certified charge, which comes into the normal three-pin plug, charges are overnight, we don't really know how long it takes, it doesn't really matter. Plug it in plug before, it before they go to bed. Um, it's time to charge it in the morning. It's fine. Um, um, they only charge it about every second night. It doesn't need to be charged every single day, day because, because it just doesn't, need, doesn't it. need it. And then they, they, found, they started they looking, started at, looking at, their at their electricity, at their electricity retailer. Well, 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 maybe buying a bit more electricity here. What should we do about this? It turns out that the electricity retailer is offering them a cheaper rate from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. That's pretty good. We can charge the car then, it doesn't need to go on at 9 or 10 o'clock when we go home, when we get home, when we go to bed, 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 when we go to um, um, sometimes, sometimes the kids, kids plug the thing into the car because they're pretty excited, excited about it. About it. This, was this was happening in my house, house for a while. Now my eight year old, year old about about four years later. Right. Right. For a while, for a while anyway, anyway, you can give the kids to the... Kids to the, the that car is costing, costing them one or two dollars a night, you know, a couple of dollars a night to charge it. So they're not noticing that on their power. If you remember back here, that car was going to cost $231 of electricity to run for a whole year. Right, so that's um, what about four dollars more per week on their power bill. So they don't they don't particularly notice that in the seasonal fluctuation. Plus, they're they're getting a cheaper power deal now anyway. So what else is going on? Well, you, re you remember we talked at the beginning about Andrew's car. He's got this 2012, as it happened. I didn't tell you that before, but anyway, 2.4 liter SUV. That's about nine liters per hundred kilometers, and that's doing 20,000 kilometers a year. Goes in and out to the city every day does the family trips and the weekends and um, you know holidays and, and down to Taupo and stuff. So that's doing about 20,000. That's $3,600 a year in fuel, which I've never thought about before. Okay. So they were pretty happy with that car. You know, it's not too old, it's still reasonably modern, but they're quite excited about the world of electric vehicles too. A couple of, so what could they do about that? A couple of options really. So we talked before about um, you know one of the popular EVs in New Zealand, Mitsubishi Outlander, sixty thousand for a new one, starting starting point, um, around about thirty or thousand for new. Well, that's about what they were paying before. That'll travel for the first thirty to fifty kilometres on electricity, and then Japanese stats say that that will be five point three litres per hundred kilometres because of course it's a fuel efficient hybrid even when it's used up as an original charge so it does the sort of thing that you're used to in a Toyota Prius or something. Remember the 30 to 50 kilometres Andrew's thinking, well, return trip to the city, you know, that's in that, that's in that sort of range. That's not feeling too bad. So that would be one option, right? What else could they do? Well, he's doing greater mileage. Right, he's doing, he's doing the bigger mileage every day. He's doing more mileage than Lisa, but Lisa's got the fuel efficient car. Uh, maybe they've got their cars around the wrong way. Maybe actually he should be driving that car into the city every day. 
running more mileage on that, and she should be using the SUV um, to pick up the kids and all that kind of stuff. That'd be another thing they could think about. What else could they do? They could change the mix of it. They could turn they could turn the way they think about their cars upside down a bit. So given they just bought the Leaf, they might not do this. But anyway, they could buy a newer EV, so a top, you know, uh, spend a bit more money on an EV as their main car. And then they could buy an older ICE, so, so that's, sorry, that's EV jargon, apologies for that. That's a petrol vehicle, so the internal combustion engine, sorry. Um, for their long trips, so they could say, well, let's maybe buy a $40,000 EV, and let's buy a five or $8,000 you know, older station wagon or something which we'll use to do the longer trips. Not a bad idea, but then that older station wagon is still going to be doing quite a lot of mileage every day. And they were a bit worried about safety and those kinds of things with their kids. And if you go to something which is a bit older and a bit cheaper, you'd say, and you know, start doing the long trips on an open road, then, you know, that's not such a great outcome from a safety point of view. So they're going to think about all of that stuff um, and work out what they might do next. That's all I've got to present to you on, but really interested in hearing what you think about all of that and sort of questions that you've got. Microphone for questions, so do you mind if I come around so everyone can hear? Sorry, I was supposed to tell you that. Oh, sorry, I, I just wanted to, what's the government in incentives to buy an electric vehicle? I mean, I could buy an iconic for $60,000 and then yep. buy an electric vehicle. Yes. Or I could see $60,000 and buy a Honda Civic Type R, which would certainly be more exciting to drive. So, what would what are the incentives are there for me to go to the electric vehicles? Sure. So the key incentive at the moment is that is that electric vehicles would otherwise pay road user charges. So you would be paying sixty dollars per hundred per thousand kilometres. So the same as the same as a small diesel. So that'd be a you know small diesel use or something. Um, so the government exempts exempts road user charges. Is the key thing at the moment. That exemption sits until. Um, Light electric vehicles make up 2% of the light vehicle fleet. So that's, a re that's on current forecasts, that's expected to be around about 2020, 2021. Um, so road user charges will come back on at that point. What that will then do, and I'm really happy to talk you through the numbers for that, that will add $600 to, those, to that 231 running costs. So actually, Bizarrely, it costs more to use the road than it does to put the fuel in the vehicle, which is um, a bit different from what we've been used to. Brent? Yeah. Um, so I mean, does the um, Minister of Transport have any stats on sort of costs to public health for having a mostly petrol or fossil fuel um, based fleet as opposed to all of the, all of the one? That's a really good question, and one of the things that you pointed out is that, or, or reminded, people in the room is that electric vehicles as well as bringing the emissions benefits also bring the air quality benefits and that's one of the things which I mentioned before has motivated people in some of those other, motivated governments in some of those other countries. We're a bit less worried about that in New Zealand but you're absolutely right, you know, those vehicles do produce particularly diesels, produce those small particular emissions. That's not something that we run stats on as far as I know, that's slightly outside the transport sector um, but it's it's certainly motivating. I know some of the local authorities um, in terms of their bus fleet, so we're starting to see some uptake of electric buses. Um, there are some things happening in Auckland. We're about to have 10 electric double-decker buses um, hit the streets in Wellington, I think, in the early next year. And certainly those local authorities are motivated by, you know, buses are running, you know, right in the middle of the downtown area. It's the last place you want to work in these things, really, isn't it? I've seen stats that suggest that up to 400 people a year die from, you know, uh, sorry. I've seen stats that suggest that up to 400 people a year die from a particle uh, based in, you know, breathing difficulties and conditions. Um, that's from the Ministry of Health, so it seems like something that the Ministry of Transport should be considering when making policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, 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 it's a really, really good example of, of how serious this issue is, and what the game is under electricity. Uh, the, the cost, cost of the vehicles, vehicles. do you, you see, see that coming, coming down? down? And, and the, the other thing they can't understand is how are they dropping so much for so importing, importing from Japan and, and England? England? The depreciation in that short time, time seems, seems to be high. high. Yep, yep, yep. really, that, that, that's, 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 that's a good question. question. So, so I'll, I'll talk, talk about, about new vehicles, vehicles and, and the imported vehicles separately because they've got different players going on there. And if it 
let's round up at the at the end and if it doesn't make sense I'll come back. So what we what we've always expected is that the price of new EVs is going to fall as battery technology gets cheaper. An electric vehicle is a relatively simple thing. It's much simpler than a petrol powered or diesel powered vehicle. It doesn't have you know, an electric vehicle typically doesn't even have a gearbox. If you want to make an electric or a reverse gear, if you want to make an electric vehicle go backwards, then you just send the current to the motor in the other direction and just drive it backwards. You don't need gears to do it. Um, battery technology uh, is supposed to be getting cheaper, and it does seem that battery prices are falling. Uh, we haven't seen the price of new vehicles fall yet. And to be honest, we don't expect it to fall in the short term. And the reason for that is that Global sales of EVs are still relatively small compared to global sales of petrol and diesel vehicles. So both manufacturers have, a rel have relatively small production runs to recover their development costs from, if that makes sense. The other thing that we think has probably happened is that most manufacturers have put their, their electric vehicles out probably selling at a loss. So we think that manufacturers are effectively going to absorb some of those some of the fallen in the cost of the batteries for a while because of what they ultimately want to be doing is you can imagine selling every vehicle at a profit. So new vehicles, less likely to see prices falling. Um, the used vehicle situation is quite different. So we've, for many, many years, we've been able to buy pretty cheap used imports from Japan, not just electric vehicles, but across you know, across petrol and diesels. We've been doing this since the late 80s, early 90s, and there's a very successful in industry that's built up around that. Um, vehicles in Japan depreciate very, very fast. That's why, that's why they get brought here, right? If they didn't depreciate fast, we would just be sticking with buying our own vehicles, not buying, um, not buying used import vehicles from Japan. So that's the main thing that's, go that's, the main thing that's going on there. Um, I think, think that about covers it. Is that, are you, are you happy? Oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, electric vehicles are subsidised in some other markets of the world. They're subsidised in the UK and they're subsidised in Japan. That means those vehicles are cheaper on those, cheaper to buy new on those markets than they are in New Zealand, where we don't get an upfront uh, purchase subsidy. When those vehicles leave the country, the governments do not recapture the subsidies. So, part one of the things that causes our used and bought vehicles to be cheaper than they otherwise would be is that, is that they are subsidised by foreign governments. That's not a new situation. Um, those of us who have been buying new uh, Australian-made vehicles. Um, have been buying vehicles subsidised by foreign governments for a long time too. Okay, so if you keep putting your hands up, I'll come around to as many as we can. But one at the back here. Uh, I just wanted to know the uh, the exemption. How does that apply to the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, and um, uh, and how would they know how many how much of the kilometres were done on electric and how much were done on on fuel, or would they try and even work it out? Yes. That's a really good question, and sometime in the next few years I'm going to have to work out the answer to that. At the moment, plug -in, both petrol plug-in hybrid vehicles and diesel plug-in hybrid vehicles are exempted from road user charges, so we don't have to ask ourselves that difficult question. In the future, when we need to impose road user charges on petrol plug-in hybrid vehicles, we're going to have to work out what the right way is to do that. And the things that you're talking about are exactly the kind of problems that need to be solved. Not, not easy, that one. Uh, yeah, question, just a couple of questions, but I'll start with one. We're well ahead of the predicted uptake, I think, for the 64,000 by yep. 2021. By the end of 2021, yep. Well, I mean, on those current, um, on that current kind of projection, when are we going to hit the uh, 64,000? And, and supplementary question is, Charging on holiday weekends, how do you see that going? Sure. Um, so we'll just go back to that graph. Um, what you could do is extrapolate that graph forward and get to 64,000 much, much sooner than the end of 2021. Um, we, in, we are not so brave as to be doing that at this point. It's really hard to know what the, what the future uptake curve is going to be. We've seen really significant growth in sales caused by um, used import Nis Nissan Leafs becoming cheaper, um, much, much greater market awareness. You know, if I was having this conversation 
a year ago it would have been with six of you, not however many of you were good enough to come out today. Um, and increasing availability of new EVs um, hitting the market. The price fall trend can't continue uh, for used imports, right? That's going to stabilise a little bit more than that. We are going to see more new EVs coming onto the market. As I said before, we're not likely to see price falls there in the short term. How many more rooms of people are there out there uh, like all of you who are interested in EVs and maybe EV buyers soon? It's really hard to know. We're going to do our best. Obviously, the sooner we can get there and the faster we can get there, the better. You know, we're not, we're not comfortable just saying, oh, this is all going to be fine, but... It's 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 really hard. It's really hard to know. Crystal crystal ball stuff, I'm afraid. What about the holiday weekend? Sorry, holiday weekend. <laughs> um, so just out there in the show stand is um, uh, sorry. There are a number of different businesses that provide charging. Um, ChargeNet is one of the larger companies that do that. Um, I was talking to ChargeNet just now, and they're already showing me. Um, uh, two pedestal chargers, so chargers that can charge two vehicles at the same time. Um, that's clearly the way that we're going to need to, that, that people are going to need to move because you're, you're, the point you make is a very good one. If I'm driving a long distance and this is the place that I want to stop to charge up my vehicle, then I'm not going to be that happy about waiting half an hour for the person in front of me to be finished. You know, if I've got kids in the car and I want to get on with it and all that stuff. So um, the market's going to continue to work on that. Um, the government also subsidises charging stations here and there. We don't subsidise all of them, but where there's a, a specific need, we have subsidised them. So, but yep, we'll need to see that growth in infrastructure. Hello. Um, Tesla recently dropped their prices by $5,000 off of their cars based on efficiencies of battery manufacturer because they make their own batteries. Not many of the vehicle manufacturers make their own batteries. I think BYD and Tesla are too. Um, so uh, a lot of the other manufacturers are, c are late coming into the game, so they've got to get all of their development costs paid for, I guess. So that, that's probably why the prices will be up for a little while. That's probably, a, that's a good point. Um, there are a couple of major manuf manufacturers that uh, EV makers have typically outsourced their um, battery production to, but then um, LG is one of them. Um, but then car manufacturers outsource lots of their components to lots of different manufacturers and actually inside an, e inside an EV battery it's, it's kind of interesting you'll find that they're actually made up of um, thousands and thousands of what look to us like little double A batteries they're not exactly the same size but they are but at that level it's an entirely generic product right no car manufacturer tries to make its own tires car manufacturers buy tires from you know Bridgestone or Dunlop or whoever it is because those people make tyres and tyres are generic. At that simple level, once you go down to the individual battery cell and it's looking like a double A battery, why would, you know, it's not necessary that you would, it's not, it's not obvious why you, would, why you would try to make your own because it's, you know, it's even more generic product than tyres are. The reason that Tesla had moved into that is that they want to secure their battery supply and that they weren't confident that some of those other manufacturers were going to be able to gear up fast enough. But, yeah, battery manufacturing capacity is an issue for the supply of new of new EVs. Um, that's going to continue to be a, a bit of a constraint. Take one, one or two more. Got you. Uh, you, re you uh, commented on your EV that you're driving, re sort of responding to the traffic around it. Um, are there differences among the different EVs, and how do you see this working out in the future in terms of how we might be driving? <laughs> I'm not sure. Could, could, could you just elaborate on this a bit? I, I just want to be really well, sure I understand your question. Yeah, it's really whether they're becoming more self-drive and, and what's happening in that whole area. So technology is emerging there. Um, the Ministry of Transport's got a, as does NZTA, the New Zealand Transport Agency, have got a team of people that are working on those kinds of things. That's not particularly my thing. I'm the I'm the electric car guy, not so much the uh, not so much the other the other stuff. Um, but clearly we need to make sure that that technology is safe and uh, reliable for use on New Zealand roads before people start using it. You know, because if you're going to take your hands off the steering wheel and look at your phone or whatever, then we need to be pretty confident that the car is going to do the right things, whatever happens. So it's, it's very important that we get that, that, we get that right. 
Okay, well, our, our time is actually up now. We've actually overrun a bit, but um, we do have these seminars running for the rest of the day. So um, thank you very much to Brent today for coming from Ministry of Transport in Wellington. So yeah, thank you very much, Brent. Thank you.